As backward as it sounds, I often listen to your videos at night, and they help me settle down and fall asleep. I'm comforted by the fact that so many people experience so many crazy things. It's amazing to me that there are still non-believers out there in the world with so many people having stories of their own. Do they think we're crazy? Do they think we're lying for attention? I know better and I'm grateful to all the people that write to you with stories of their own. Thanks for spreading the wisdom to all of us. The craziest thing happened to me a couple of years ago when my friends and I rented this cabin in the middle of the woods for a couple of nights. We were celebrating a friend's birthday, so we all pitched in and split the cost of an Airbnb. This place was gorgeous with amazing views all around. There were mountain views as far as the eye could see and a beautiful creek running right through the property. There was nobody around, just wildlife and beautiful nature. That night we had a nice fire going and we were just relaxing and laughing. We heard this strange echoing laughter coming from the woods. We all just froze and stayed quiet listening to hear it again. A while passed and we just kind of brushed it off. Then about half an hour later we hear the sound again creepy, haunting laughter. We decided to investigate, grabbed some flashlights and headed into the forest. We entered the woods and started looking around with our flashlights. We didn't see or hear anything, so we went deeper into the forest. We stopped again and just listened for a while, but we didn't hear any noise. We were about to head back when a beautiful blonde woman in a long flower dress walked over to us. She asked who we were, and we told her that we were renting the cabin nearby and heard a strange sound in the woods. She asked what sound we heard, and we told her it was a strange, creepy laugh. The woman told us that she hadn't laughed since her beloved husband was brutally stabbed to death in the middle of the night. None of us knew what to say. I just said, so sorry for your loss. She thanked me and invited us to come over to her home and further investigate the strange sound. We agreed, and we followed her through the woods and to her home. We arrived at this pretty little cottage with a garden in the front, and she said that was her house and she brought us in. We sat down in the living room and she started making us some tea. She asked us how long we'd been searching for the source of the sound, and we told her a little over an hour. She said that other people that have rented the Airbnb have claimed to have heard strange sounds coming from the forest, but to her knowledge, Nobody ever found anything. I asked her what kind of sounds the people heard. She said that people have heard screams, cries, and strange animal sounds, but never laughter. When we asked her if she had ever heard anything, she said there are all kinds of wicked things around here. I asked her why she didn't move. She said that her husband had built the house, and all her fondest memories were in the house. We sat in the living room talking about all kinds of crazy things until very late. We were all exhausted and figured it was time to head back to the cabin and call it a night. Shortly after we left, we heard the laughter again, this time very loudly. It was as if the laughter was coming from the blonde woman's house. When we looked back, we saw a woman peering through her window at us. It wasn't the same woman. She had gray skin, black hair, black eyes, and an evil, nasty grin. We ran back to the cabin as quickly as we could, and we kept hearing the laughter trail off behind us. We immediately packed up and drove down the road. We stopped at a motel that we passed and spent the night there. The next morning, we got breakfast at a local diner, and we started talking about what had happened. We looked at the reviews on Airbnb, and several people claimed the house was haunted. Multiple people claimed to hear creepy sounds coming from the forest. A couple even mentioned the blonde woman and how nice and how hospitable she was. One review said evil lurks there and to never go there. One review said that a horrible demon witch haunted the woods and she left in fear for her life. This was too much. Multiple people had similar experiences that we just had and we got to read them all freshly afterward. There was no denying that the experience we had was unexplainable, but it was relieving to hear that we weren't the only victims. The sound of that laughter will always haunt me until the day I die. Now when I rent an Airbnb, I make sure to read all the reviews thoroughly. That is an experience I never want to have ever again.
I always believed that witches were a thing of legend, but now I believe in them. This experience has also opened me up to the possibility of extraterrestrials, demons, Bigfoots, ghosts, and pretty much anything that is considered paranormal. One thing is for sure, we don't know what's out there. Every day is an opportunity to learn, and instead of belittling people who have experiences with the paranormal, we should strive to learn all we can to understand these things more. Maybe it's possible to get rid of the witch and help her move on peacefully into the afterlife. I can only hope that if I become a witch that someone does that to me. I don't want to spend all eternity being evil and spreading fear into the hearts of innocent people. As a police officer, I can tell you we get called out on some strange stuff, but when something really unexplainable happens, it usually gets brushed under the rug. The higher-ups don't want us to get a reputation for being wackos. And I mean, I can understand that. But if more people were allowed to tell their stories, then all this stuff could become less taboo. Anyway, it's nice to be able to tell about this here anonymously. I know that most of your listeners are less judgmental of the unknown, I've been on the force in one of the Salt Lake City suburbs for about 12 years. When this happened, me and my partner were working the night shift. We were called to investigate a suspected break-in at a morgue. When we arrived, the custodian was waiting for us out front. He told us that he had been mopping one of the corridors and had seen something move in his peripheral vision. He said he looked up and saw a person sprint from one side of the hallway to the other. He wasn't able to give much of a description, though. He said he hadn't seen the person very clearly since they had flashed by so fast. It was just a dim outline, but it was enough for him to be sure that someone was in there. He had gotten freaked out and went outside to make the call to the station. My partner and I went in the building. We called out to anyone who might be inside, but we got no answer. So we began to do a sweep. We walked down the central corridor with our hands on our guns. We were going slow. We had to check every room on each side of the hallway. It was creeping me out a little, to be honest. I mean, I've been around plenty of dead bodies and stuff. But I didn't know what kind of individual we were chasing. Who breaks into a morgue? Every now and then we would call out for any intruder to show themselves. We were about halfway down the corridor when I got to a room with the light off. It was pitch black inside. I flipped the switch expecting to find the intruder hiding. But it was just the waiting room for visiting relatives. Then I heard my partner call out, Hey, stop! Turn around! I got a big surge of adrenaline and swung back out into the corridor. I saw that my partner was pointing his gun towards something at the end of the hallway. He said, She went around that corner. The custodian was back by the door. When he realized which way she had gone, he yelled out, She's trapped! There aren't any exits that way! We were concerned that with the person being trapped, they might do something crazy. We had the custodian lock himself in the waiting room for safety. Then we started advancing down that hallway. We kept calling out to the woman to show herself. We made it clear that we weren't there to hurt her. I made it to the end of the hallway first. I had my back against the wall and I looked around the corner. I saw her. The woman was standing by a big gray door that was partially open. The lights were off in that area so it was hard to see her clearly but I could see she wasn't holding a gun. She had long, blonde hair. I stepped out from behind the corner to begin approaching her, but she went through the door and disappeared into the room behind it, and the door closed behind her. I ran up to the door and pulled at the handle. She had locked it. I was banging on it and calling out to her, but there was no answer. The door had a deadlock on it. I yelled out to my partner to go get the custodian to unlock it. It seemed to take forever. Finally, the custodian came around the corner with my partner. When he saw which door it was, he just said, This door? Are you sure? I'm like, Yeah, she went through there and locked it behind her. He said, That's the cold room. The door doesn't lock from the inside. I didn't know how to respond to that. But he found the right key and unlocked the door. I'm yelling, We're coming in. Put your hands up. I had my gun ready and got inside the room. My partner was swinging his mag light to light up the corners. The custodian hit the light switch and the room lit up. It was empty except for some equipment against the wall and several gurneys in the middle of the room. 
All of the gurneys were empty except for one that was covered in a white sheet. The sheet was covering what appeared to be a body underneath it. I remember thinking how ludicrous the whole thing was. What a place to decide to hide yourself. I approached the gurney and it was the smell that made me pause. It smelled like a corpse. I've been around plenty of them. I finally pulled the sheet down and the woman was laying there. She had straggly blonde hair all around her face. I just froze in my tracks. There was no question in my mind this was the woman I had seen by the door. I finally came to my senses enough to check the tag on her toe. It said she had died the day before. We just stared at each other in disbelief. I mean, what can you say? We had all seen her and we couldn't all be crazy. You could tell how shaken the custodian was. He said he'd been working there a long time and had never seen anything like it. I swear it had to be a ghost. Everyone in Jersey's heard of the Jersey Devil. Well, I don't know about the young people. These days, they don't seem to pay attention to anything unless it's online. Not me. I grew up in Hamilton, New Jersey, in the Pine Barrens, so I heard all about it when I was a kid. Hamilton is the blueberry capital of the world because there's lots of blueberries grown around it. When I was a kid, it was a pretty small town. My parents owned a diner that specialized in blueberry pancakes, big surprise. They ran it together like a true mom and pop joint. As soon as I was big enough to stand on a stool to wash dishes, they put me to work. Later, I'd flip pancakes or wait tables. Old timers hung around drinking coffee, and they'd talk about the Jersey Devil. Claimed they'd heard it at night or seen it flying through the sky. Kids were always warned not to go in the forest because it might get them. Of course, we didn't listen, and I spent a good bit of time riding bikes on the dirt out there with other like-minded youngsters. We stayed out until dusk sometimes, but never saw any evidence of the thing. The barons can be kind of creepy at night, though. Once, an old dude came into the diner with a grainy black-and-white photo. Everyone passed it around and took a look, but really, it just looked like a bird in the sky at night. There was a moon, but not enough to light it up much. I didn't hear anything about the Jersey Devil for a long time after that. I kept working at the cafe until I went into the army for a couple years, came back and dad and mom decided to retire. They took off for Florida and left me with the diner. I got married and me and Terry ran the diner together, mom and pop again. Had a couple kids and didn't bother to tell them about the Jersey Devil. I mean, I didn't really believe in it. They both moved away and then it was just me and Terry again. Terry doesn't like to stay up late so I usually close by myself. We don't get a lot of business at that time, so a lot of nights, it's just me. There are a few regulars who come in at night, folks who work the late shift or just restless types. Then there's tourists or truckers on their way through. I started to hear about sightings. Most people had just heard a weird screeching. Loud. Late at night. A few saw something, too. Flying in the sky, mostly. I didn't take it too seriously, but I thought it was interesting that I'd just started hearing about it again since I hadn't for so long. Maybe I thought it had been around when those old timers saw it, and it left somewhere and came back. Maybe it went on to the other side of the Pine Barrens. This went on for maybe a year, where every month or so someone would come in with a story. One day I closed the diner as usual, went outside and heard a screech. It was so loud it sounded like an airplane. If an airplane was a hawk or some kind of angry bird. I looked around, but I didn't see anything except the quiet, empty street. Things pretty much shut down in Hamilton by 8 o'clock. We stay open until 11, but not much else does except the bar down the street. I thought about asking the bartender if he'd heard anything. Jack, who's usually the only one there at night, is pretty hard of hearing. I thought it was worth a try, though. Or maybe I just wanted a beer. So I walked over and ordered one. Since it was Tuesday night, no one was there except a couple swaying together on the small dance floor near the jukebox. I doubted they'd heard anything over the crooning of Frank Sinatra. I asked Jack if he'd heard a screech. A what? He says. 
so I ask him if he's heard anything about the Jersey Devil lately. A few stories, he says. Don't put no stock in them. I asked him for examples, and he says, You know, people seeing stuff in the sky? Weird screaming noises. Maybe some new drug the kids are taking. I don't know. Going back to my car, I wasn't sure if I was comforted. On the one hand, Jack didn't believe there was anything to worry about. But on the other, he was hearing the same stories as me. So that wasn't good. I thought about asking Terry, but I decided against it. Likely I'd hear the same thing and anyway Terry would have told me. So I kept it to myself. Two nights later I was inside the diner mopping when I heard it. This time I went out the back door. It sounded like a screaming freight train barreling down the street. I can't believe that other people didn't hear that thing. Maybe they explained it away somehow. Maybe they thought it was a train, I don't know. But I looked up in the sky and I saw something that looked like a flying dragon from a movie. Its wingspan was bigger than any bird of hawk I'd ever seen. The sound started up again and I thought I should go back inside, but I wanted to see what happened. It headed toward the woods and finally swooped out of sight behind some of those tall pines. I heard it called one final time and then I did go back inside. I was shaking so bad I could barely mop. The next day I asked a few people if they'd heard it, including Terry. They all looked kind of nervous. I think they knew what it was, but no one wanted to admit it. I heard it a few more times since then and I tried to get a picture, but I haven't been able to yet.